We are celebrating the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, the LWML, on this Sunday. And so we give thanks and praise to the Lord for the work of the LWML, and we'll think of that through our sermon as well as in our prayers this morning. We begin our worship with the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 525. Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon the sure confession of my virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Old Testament reading for this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. 
So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and the hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by gifts the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering and death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. <coughs> Will you please rise as we join again the singing of our triple hallelujah for our gospel lesson. <coughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. came up and in order to test Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let man not separate. And in the house the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. we join together in the confession of our Christian faith with the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. At this time I invite the children forward for the children's message. Maybe, maybe not. Coming up Oakland or not? You coming? <laughs> now no, she stopped. I, I should have called her out, right? So <laughs> there we go. Mom's brave, so. All right. Hi, Oakland. All right. Great to see everybody up here this morning. Well, you heard me read our first lesson today, and we were talking about creation. So I brought along some of my friends here. I brought these up here before. This guy is going to help us talk about birds, right? He's a penguin, all right? And I brought along... Yeah, that's right. Then I brought along another one here. You've seen him before, right? Yeah, it's a lamb. It looks like a bunny, right? It's a lamb, though, and that's going to be all the farm animals. And then we've got this guy here, a monkey. That one's really easy, right? He's going to be all the wild animals, all right? So we've got birds, we've got all the farm animals, and we've got all the wild animals and God made each and every one of them. Remember how he said it. He said he spoke and they all came into being, meaning the birds and all the farm animals and all the wild animals. And then he told Adam and Eve that they were just supposed to have dominion over them. So in other words, do we eat birds? Oh, we do too. What's a bird that we eat? Goose. All right, there's a bird we eat. Yeah, what, what, other kind of, what other kind of bird do we eat? The easiest one, fried chicken, right, exactly, right? Fried chicken, right. All right, then we've got, then we've got farm animals. Do we eat farm animals? Yeah. Yeah, right? We've got bacon from a pig, right, exactly, right? And all the other good things, right? Okay. Now, wild animals, can we eat wild animals? No. Well, of course we can. What's one of the what, what's one of the we have around here that we can eat? Yeah, we eat lots of food, but what's something that we can hunt around here that people hunt around here? Fish. Well, we can fish. That's right. How about hunting? Deer. Deer. Right. That's what I was thinking of too. Right. So we can we can we can hunt all those kind of things, and that's part of having dominion over the earth. That this is what God has called us to do. Have dominion over it, so they're not just running all over the place. Even though they are running all over the place, right? And so God said that as he was doing that, he told Adam, he said, Adam, I want you to name all the animals. Now, it's kind of funny because if you think about it, what we're still calling animals today, guess who was the first one that called them that? Adam, right. I gave you the answer, didn't I? That's right. Adam, that's right. We're still calling them those same names today. Now, it's probably changed along the way, but we're still naming those same animals that way. But then he said to Adam, he said, Adam, you know what? There's no one like you. So, what did God do? What? He gave him a wife. That's right. That's exactly what the text says. He gave him his wife. And what was her name again? Eve. Right, right, Eve. And so Eve and Adam were to have dominion over the earth, and then they were also to do something else. And he said this, and he still says it today, as a matter of fact, that they were to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Okay? He still says that that's what we're supposed to do. That's why we have children here in our church service. Can you hear them throughout the morning here? <laughs> you can be all by yourself. Here. So here we are. We have all these great gifts that God has given to us, all the animals and our families and our homes, right? He gives us everything. But, of course, the greatest gift he has given us is 
Jesus. Right? Jesus. That's right. When he died and rose so that we can live as his people and tell other people. And he died on the cross. That's right. So we live, see, we live right now so we can tell other people that he died on the cross and rose for us. And so I want you to listen to the rest of the... That's right, for our sins. So I want you to listen to the rest of the sermon as we talk about all those great gifts that God has given to us through his son Jesus, especially even now as we are you know, that many years removed from the creation, but we still do what he's called us to do. All right? Thanks for coming down. You guys can head back. And we will continue now the singing of our next hymn, hymn number 685. mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is our Old Testament lesson for this morning. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. 
So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and then brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is very interesting for us to hear the creation story once again. Remember, Genesis is the big picture and Genesis 2 is the microscopic, microscopic, if you will, kind of picture of that little portion of creation. Yes, we get the whole picture, but then just a little bit more so. Because in Genesis 1, it just says, he made male and female. Male and female, he created them. Set them in the garden and so forth and so on. But no, in Genesis 2, we get this another part of the story, the rest of it, if you will, that it is not good that man should be alone. In other words, creation itself was not good until Eve was created. Something was just not right. And it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't that God said, gee, how did that happen? No, by no means. But it was the fact that he was going to make a big deal about it. That he was going to make a helper fit for Adam. Just for Adam. He was going to make one that was going to be complementary to him. One that was going to be exactly like him and yet different at the same time. And here, of course, we already know how God created the animals. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast. He called them, and they were there. He spoke, and they were there, the plants, the animals, and so forth. That was what God did out of nothing when he formed the whole earth. And there's Adam, doing exactly as God commanded him to do. To have dominion over the all of creation. I weep sometimes, not out loud, of course, or not even maybe literally, but when I'm walking in the mornings or at any other times, and there's the animals there out in the woods. Yes, a couple, three weeks ago or so even, I saw another skunk. Thanks be to God, it decided to go the other direction again as the first one did a while, quite a while back now. But I've seen possums and squirrels and foxes, raccoons and deer, all of God's creation. And as I've told many people, I've got quite a bit of time out there when I'm in, out in the morning, especially on Saturdays, a little longer. Here it is. Your pastor is a nutcase. I am, because I want to talk to the animals. I want to be able to ask them questions. I want to know what it is they're thinking. But of course, we've lost that. Nowadays, they just run from us. But I would love to be able to do just that. And that's why I say I'm a nutcase, but there might be other reasons for that as well. But the case is, as Christians, we know that Adam was called by God to name those Adam, animals. To call them what he was going to call them. And to me, that was a picture also of the perfection of Adam's intellect. I mean, you think about it. Here comes a millipede. And Adam calls it what he calls it. Now, I'm assuming it's something on that same line. Now, if I was there to be naming it, you know, I might call it something like gross and disgusting. Or whatever other name that pops to my mind. But there again, that's a flawed mind. A sinful mind. Where the mind of Adam there was no sin. There was 
God's perfection in his intellect. And Adam used that intellect to speak of and to all the animals, their names. And yet, there was not one found to be like him. So, our text goes on then and says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to, all, to fall rather upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. You think about the intimacy of what God did in the creation of Adam as well as Eve, right? Out of the dust of the earth, he forms Adam and breathes into him his spirit, life-giving breath. Out of Adam, the Lord God creates Eve. He takes something that we think as somewhat necessary, right? Protecting all of our vital organs. Takes it out of him after putting him into the sleep. And then forms Eve, the entire woman out of one rib. Which is an amazing feat, I believe, in its own right. But this is what the Lord did for a reason. He forms her perfectly so that Adam now has, as Scripture tells us, a helper. One like him and yet different. One that is going to be complementary to him and yet different. By the grace of God, the Lord puts into motion marriage in its most perfect form. And we've heard, unfortunately, in our gospel lesson, right? Moses did give them a sign a certificate of divorce. But that was not what was intended. Because the Lord says it's because of their hardness of heart. Because of sin, everything that was perfect has been destroyed. But in its perfection, the Lord God forms Eve and brings her to Him, to Adam. And in his perfection, that intellect of perfection, he knows exactly who she is. Bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and he names her woman because she was taken out of man. Adam is the only man, because of course in his perfect, perfect state, he was the only man to truly see a woman as she was to be seen. That has been lost. But Adam saw his wife as something that God had given to him, not to be abused or divorced or anything else, but perfection. That is the intimacy of that creation story that God has given to us to look upon and remember. And give thanks of all that God has done for us as men and women. 
And see, that's why today we are also celebrating Luther Women's Missionary League. Because, of course, women are not second-class citizens. They never have been. They are called by God to do exactly what we men are called to do. Not to be pastors, of course, not that aspect of it, but to proclaim Christ. And that is exactly what the LWML has been doing for all the years of its calling and its service to our church body. To proclaim Christ here in this country and abroad through the means of the mites and their offerings, the service that they give to the church, to their pastors, to their congregations. What a joy it is to be able to celebrate with the LWML today and all the other days that they will be celebrated as we give thanks and praise for, yes, those pennies and nickels and dimes and dollars. And they add up into the millions across the synod to do the work that many of us don't even think about. Because, of course, we know that there are so many organizations today that need funding. You probably get at least one, if not a thousand different mailings a year because everybody needs money. To be able to proclaim the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, yes, it is just as simple as one-on-one, -on -one, but we also get to do that corporately around the world. To proclaim Christ Jesus, oh, not in perfection, but as those who have been made righteous. Those who have been made righteous in the sight of God through the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. See, that's why our text then concludes this morning with these great words that God Himself proclaims, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. As I said in our ladies' aid meeting the other day, think about it. God says this here in Genesis. Jesus says it in the Gospels. Paul reiterates it in the book of Ephesians. A man will leave his father and his mother Now when Jesus says it in Gospels, it makes sense to the world. When Paul says it, it definitely makes sense to the world. But when God the Father says it here, in Genesis 2, a man shall leave his father and his mother, they have no knowledge, Adam and Eve, of what a father or a mother is. Oh, they will, because they will become ones of those, each. See, that's that one flesh relationship that God has given to males and females as husbands and wives. God places them there and He has this great plan for all the earth. They are the first family, this new family. They were made by God. To have children, right? To be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the Lord is still bringing two people, two, a male and a female together, to make a whole. That is why Adam says, Now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He got it. We get it. Wholeness is a male and a female in the relationship that God had given. Oh, it's not going to be for everyone. We know that for whatever reason. But for those that do, it is what God has called us to do. This is not something that we just say, oh, well, it was a good thought then. No. 
it is still very valid to this very day. A man will leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. Man and woman, husband and wife. God is the perfect matchmaker there for Adam and Eve. And that is what our prayer is. As humans, praying for our children, our children's children, and whatever it is that the Lord allows us to live. There is no shame among Adam and Eve. That's that last verse. No shame. In perfection, there is no shame. It is God's gift. Everything was as it was to be. It was perfect and very good. By the grace of God, a helper was found, made for Him. And by the grace of God, we look forward to all that the Lord has in store for us as husbands and wives, and those who one day will be looking, and we give thanks. We give thanks that God is smarter than us. Of course He is. He's God. By His grace, we live in Him. In Jesus' name, Amen. Will you please rise as we join together in the singing of the offertory. Heavenly Father, we, your people, have gathered once again in your house, and we give you thanks and praise, for you have called us to be your own. You have given us faith through the power of your Holy Spirit and the waters of holy baptism. You have caused us to walk in you now, this day, in the days of our life, that we may remain faithful in all that we do, standing before you in repentance and hearing the absolution that our sins are truly forgiven. For this we give you thanks and praise, for this great gift that you've given to us of your Son. Father, we ask that you will be with us as a congregation here in this place, that we may truly look to you all days of our lives, giving you thanks and praise, even in the midst of things we do not understand. Gracious Heavenly Father, with good thanks, giving this day, we come before you and we thank you and praise you that young Quinn Cook will be brought to, to holy baptism this afternoon. We ask, Father, that you be with this little one and, and their family, keeping them in your care. Be a blessing to them as only you can do. Gracious Father, we pray for all those who are suffering because of the hurricane of the two weeks ago, as well as the possibility of another hurricane coming towards Florida. Gracious Lord, we ask that your will be done in the lives of your people. For those who do not know you, Father, we ask that you will allow someone to proclaim your Son to them, that they may also have the great joy that we have of Christ, even in the midst of suffering. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the women's, Lutheran Women's Missionary League, for the many years that you have given these faithful women to serve you as your people. Gracious Lord, be with this organization as they continue to look to you for guidance in all the different things that they use their mites and their offerings for in this country as well as around the world. Father, we pray that the name of your Son will continue to be proclaimed as it always has been. Father, we pray that you will be with Kendra Hayes, who is in hospital at this time in St. Louis. Gracious Lord, we ask that you will be a blessing to her, that you will allow the doctors and nurses to use their skills to their highest abilities, and that you will allow her to be able to leave as quickly as possible. 
and that even with the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes, that you will be a blessing to her and keep her as your uh, daughter and through the waters of holy baptism as well. Father, we ask that you will also continue to be with all those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. Be a blessing to them and keep them. Watch over them and ask that you will be with their families as well. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for those who have authority over us and our government. Be with our, our president and, and the Congress. Be with the governor of our state, his legislature, the mayor of our village and its board. And gracious Heavenly Father, continue to be with those who are looking forward to having an office, be it a re-election or election. Gracious Lord, be with these men and women. Allow them to see the error of their ways if they are not walking in you. And the decisions that they make, if they are not of you, that they will repent and also be able to join with us in giving thanks and praise to your Son, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection and saving us sinners. Gracious Father, we pray for our church body, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Be with our synodical president, our district president, and our circuit visitor. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you and ask that you will continue to be with all missionaries that you will protect them and keep them and allow them to see the fruits of their labors. Gracious Father, we thank you also for those who serve us in the military of our country in all the different branches. Watch over them, protect them, and keep them. For we know that there will always be wars and rumors of wars until our Lord returns. And gracious Father, we thank you and praise you that even though we see things as they are today, we know that sadly they will get worse, and yet for those of yours who walk in you, we as your people give you thanks and praise for the comfort and peace that you give to us. Father, for all these things, we bring them before you in the prayers that are upon our hearts this day, trusting and praising you and asking that you will watch over us and those in our prayer list also this morning. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. And we join together in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you all his peace. Just have one brief announcement that I need to make this morning. I will be out of town uh, starting tomorrow through Wednesday. I'll be back Wednesday in time for uh, shut-in communion or social hall communion. I'll be back in time for that. But uh, the uh, Central Illinois District and the Southern Illinois District will be meeting down at uh, Lake Carlisle for our uh, All Pastors Conference of both districts. So I will be leaving tomorrow morning. And I'll be back Wednesday then uh, early afternoon. So, but I'm only an hour plus away. If anything happens, please give me a call, text, email, whatever. I will have all my uh, electronics on and things like that. And uh, we give, uh, so I, I will be, I'll, I'll be able to come back if I need to. But uh, like I say, I will be gone at least for those days. All right, we join together now in the singing of our final hymn, hymn number 722. 